but was alive during the Blazers' playoff series against Memphis. And uh, we are excited about great things to come. Uh, it's C.J. McCollum joining us. C.J., appreciate the time. I know you're back east a little later back there, but uh, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me on. And by the way, I know you're, you know, you serious XM guy, NBA stuff, uh, your own show. You want to be, you know, you're into broadcasting, journalism. This show goes all summer and Monday nights, six o'clock. Anytime you want to come in and host, co-host anything, it's all yours. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to take you guys up on that this year. Uh, last year, I said I was going to come in, but never ended up happening. But I'll be back in June for workouts. So, uh, and you can, get up there. you can get rich on what we're going to pay you. <laughs> 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 How much are we talking here? Well, you know, you know, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, uh, CJ, congratulations on a great – I know you're a team guy, so you're not going to celebrate anything that happened in the playoffs. But your series against Memphis and the way things went, we talked about it in the first segment. You know, it's one thing for a guy to come out and do it one game and kind of surprise the team when he's not on the scouting report, not part of the game plan. But for Dave Yeager to come out after game three and talk about your effectiveness and really talk about game planning to stop you and then to see what you did in game four and then – 33 in game five uh explain that i mean what what went right for you in those playoff games especially i mean opportunity i guess obvious is is the obvious answer there but talk about your series and talk about your success well, i think obviously initially the series started off kind of shaky for not only myself but the team we didn't shoot particularly well in those first few games on the road and i think we had a lot of good looks. I know myself personally, I had a lot of great looks. Didn't finish, didn't finish well on the rim. And I think it kind of just snowballed uh, through the rest of the team. Everybody everybody was struggling to hit shots. And I think that affected us defensively. But I think once we got home, we got settled in. And we began to check out the film and kind of see what we could get our looks at. And I just continued to get reps. I think we got more confidence offensively. And that, that carried over to the defensive end. And uh, more, more specific for me, I think just trying to stay aggressive, making sure that I'm taking advantage of uh, fast break opportunities and just continue to just put my head down and try to make something happen. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, uh, obviously, we come away with the result we wanted uh, collectively uh, throughout the series, but it's, uh, it's good to have some positive momentum heading into the summer, but in my mind, I did what I was supposed to do, take advantage of an opportunity, take advantage of scoring opportunities, and, and uh, just continue to work hard and make sure that it transfers over to the game. Uh, we'll talk a little later about you in the summer league, but uh, let's stay on this series that's about to start because you're an NBA guy that plays the position. How will Jason Terry check Curry? You know, if you had that job that you were going to check Curry, that'll, that'll be Jason Terry's job. Now, they'll put a reason on him, too, I'm sure, at some time. But can Jason Terry even think about checking Curry? Because Curry's a lot like I mean, you. You can get your own shot. Curry gets his own shot. Yeah, I think Jason Terry obviously has a tough cover um, heading into this matchup. But I think the sleeper, the sleeper pick is Patrick Beverly. I know he got his uh, cast off recently, and he's going to try some different uh, – uh, wrist, wrist wear or hand wear, whatever he broke. And I, I'm sure he'll, he's going to try his best to play in the game. So Jason Terry might be off the hook. But if he's not, <laughs> I think the biggest thing for him is to just <laughs> try to make things difficult for Steph, try to make him drive. Because obviously I think he averaged over 10 three-point attempts per game in that in that last series. And he, and he hits at a, a ridiculous clip from there. So just make him drive, make him be a driver passer, and uh, just hope for the best. Are you – Copying your game a little bit after Curry, or is Curry too close to your age for you to copy his game? Is he one of the best at getting a shot off in the NBA right now? Absolutely. Uh, I don't. I don't care about the age factor. I'm, I'm just a student of the game, trying to learn and better myself. So you know, I have no shame in saying I steal his moves. I steal Dane's moves. I watch film on all those guys and just try to add what I can to help myself become a better player. But I think he's one of the one of the better guys in the NBA getting shot off just because of his ability to play on the ball, play off the ball. Obviously, he has a nice floater. Uh, his paint finishing is improved, and he has unlimited range from three. So, you know, I, I definitely watch his game and study it, and, and study a lot of other guys in the league as well. CJ, it seemed like about halfway through the season, maybe even three quarters of the way through the season, there, there was a a confidence light maybe that went on with you whereas we'd see you drive in and maybe look for your teammates and try to defer and then all of a sudden you started looking for your own a little bit and 
your game just dramatically changed. And, you know, we talked about your scoring in the playoffs and your performance in, uh, you know, games three, four, and five uh, in the series. What was it? You know, was it was it coach talking to you? Was it one of your teammates talking to you who said, you know, don't be so careful about always deferring. Go get yours. Help us out. What was Did something like that happen? Yeah, I think it was a combination of things. Uh, honestly, the coaching staff does a great job of, of encouraging us, and obviously I work very closely with our, our staff, with, with DZ, with Tibbs. Even I do a lot of shooting drills with Jay, and he's always challenging me to you know, become a better shooter and, and just take advantage of opportunities. I think that's what I did. But the biggest thing... You know, for me personally, was trying to try. Early on, I was just trying not to make mistakes. I was trying to play perfect basketball, and and that's not my game. My style was to be aggressive, to to try to make plays, and uh, to try to create something and, and have an impact in the game. I think I was getting away from that, and I was becoming a shell of myself. So, uh, my family was always in my ear and telling me, you know, there's a reason why I was drafted, and and that uh, if I don't play my game, I'm going to find myself. You know, trying to find a job somewhere. So, you know, my my thing was that I'm gonna I'm gonna either go out swinging my way or or hit that home run playing my way. And I think it eventually worked out. And I found the balance between you know when to pass, when to shoot, when to attack, and just what Coach Stott says is the biggest thing for me is just simplifying the game, just making a decision and sticking with it. Once I once I make it, just trusting my instinct. I'll tell you, CJ. Uh... Playing NBA basketball pays a lot better than broadcasters. And, <laughs> and I know you're interested in broadcasting, but hold that off for a few years. Stay in that NBA. Now, Summer League, is this part of trying to make improvements? What do you need to work on? Because there will be a lot of guys shooting for you. You're kind of the big cheese of the Summer League as far as, you know, <laughs> at the end of the year, you were the man against Conley scoring 33 that last game. So there will be a lot of guys going after you. So what are you planning on working on? And uh, is there a little pressure on you with all these guys coming after you? No, for starters, I am not the man. I'm just one of many men <laughs> on this team in the NBA. Just want to clarify that. All right. And secondly, uh, I'm just just trying to work on my game and just trying to get better at the things I'm good at and just continue to work on weaknesses. I'm not trying to impress anyone or anything like that. And everybody's good at things for a reason. And I think a lot of guys get lost in the NBA trying to trying to do things they're not good at. You can just continue to master the things you're good at. Continue to fine tune things. Obviously, I, I'm a good shooter, so I'll continue to work on my shooting. Uh, continue to work on my floater. You know, get better at you know, getting my shot off in less dribbles and just becoming more efficient with my movements. And, and I'll take it from there. But I'm not sure I'll be playing in summer league. I will be working out with the team, but um, to my knowledge, I'll be in Vegas. So I'm gonna have a camp. I'm running in Canton, Ohio, but I'll be around the team as much as possible. But I don't. I don't believe I'll be playing in any games. Oh, okay. Well, CJ, you know. Your ability to finish at the rim is something that I think surprised some people. Not not you, obviously, but especially against a great defense in Memphis. Uh, physical wise, how do you look at like adding to your frame and building muscle and all that? Some guys don't want to necessarily do that. They think it takes away from their quickness. How do you approach this off season uh, in the weight room? I mean, are, are you trying to get a, a lot bigger, add muscle? Did did it show you anything late? Is there anything you feel like? Uh, you couldn't do that maybe some muscle would help you do, or do you kind of like where you're at now? I like where I'm at now, but I think there's room for improvement. Uh, I think, you know, me, DK, Todd, staff, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll go over a game plan you know, once I get back in June. And, and I think one of the biggest things I have to do is continue to improve my leg strength. And I think when you, obviously, that helps you gain weight when you when your legs get stronger and you continue to lift on your legs and make that a, a, a point of emphasis. But I think that'll help me with my explosiveness finishing around the rim to help me defensively on guarding guys and chasing guys and, and just becoming quicker laterally and then obviously the core strength is huge in the NBA and I think Steph Curry he has a really good core Russell Westbrook obviously a more explosive player his core is ridiculous in terms of his strength his ability to change direction his ability to guard multiple positions his ability to post up and finish around the rim I think it's it's come through a lot of leg lift and a lot of core focus and then obviously upper body stuff will will help but i, I want to make the lower body a, a point of emphasis so a guy like prigioni when he checks chris paul if he checked you next year you'd blow right by him with, <laughs> with your new strength right 
I think I blow by him with my old strength. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like I like the confidence too. Yeah. CJ, I've, one one or two more things. We'll let you go here. Going into a summer like this, we're going to talk about a lot of the perspective changes and and free agents, and there's change on the horizon. Perhaps we don't know who's going to be back, who won't. Is it unsettling for you as a member of this team to go into a summer like this, or or can you shut all that out and just do what you you know? Do what you can control and act on the things you can improve on and, and let all that other stuff work itself out. Yeah, I think it's the latter. I think that, you know, as a player, your job is to play. Your job is to perform when your numbers call. Your job is to prepare in the summertime and work on your game and get better. So, I mean, obviously you hear this stuff, but it's just white noise. Um, it doesn't affect me as an individual because regardless of who's back with our team, regardless of who we draft, I'm going to work on my game the same way, and I'm going to come back a better player ready to help out regardless of what we have and what we don't have. So I think that, you know, it just depends on the player's mindset, but my mindset is to just get better and uh, to go back and do the things I've been doing you know, throughout my entire life in terms of you know, working out, you know, watching film and, and listening to the staff and, and the strength and conditioning and, and just come back a better player, and then everything else will fall into place. CJ, I know it was disappointing the end of the season, but uh, you were terrific there in the latter part of that playoff series. And uh, great things are on the horizon, and the fans are pulling for you, and we appreciate it. And uh, hey, when you get back into town, shoot me a text. The set is yours. You can sit down, you can host, you can co host, you can do whatever you want. Now that you're the big cheese. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not no big cheese. I'm just uh, pepper jack or cheddar. Yeah, that's right. Like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, CJ. Travel safely back to Portland soon, and we'll talk to you real soon. All right, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, C.J. McCollum, our guest here on Trailblazers Courtside. Uh, great to catch up with him and, and talk about and kind of relive his moments from the playoff series. And interesting to hear what, you know, we need to hear guys what they feel like what they have to work on over the summers.